Okay, so now we're going to talk about M56, which is one of the many globular clusters within the Messier catalogue. Why are you doing that? <laughs> well, because it's kind of well known that they're kind of all the same. So I'm just going to centre that. Does an astro imager like you get any sense of excitement from these run of the mill globular clusters? Um, I appreciate them for what they are. From an imaging point of view, they're not that exciting. It's nice to have a good catalogue of images, but I uh, would tend to concentrate my time more on uh, the more sort of interesting targets rather than uh, you know something like this, for example. So clearly, by this point, Messier was well into his catalogue, 56th one he came across. This is actually one that he discovered for himself. He actually discovered it at the same time as finding a comet. In fact, Messier never resolved it into stars. He just saw it as a diffuse nebula. A little later, William Herschel came along and actually took rather better observations of it and was able to say, actually, this is a globular cluster. This is one of these little round clusters of stars. Open clusters, to me, are kind of a bit more varied. You know, you can get really young ones and intermediate age ones, whereas all the globular clusters, they've all got lots of stars, like tens of thousands of stars in them. They're all really, really old and all kind of in the halo of the Milky Way. So they're all fairly similar in some respects. Well, Paul, you're sacked as the marketing manager for Deep Sky. Videos. I know. The classic thing that astronomers like to do when they study these globular clusters is you measure the brightness of the stars and you measure what colour they are, whether they're red or blue. And then you make a plot of one of these things against the other, I think called a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram after the first people who did it, or a colour magnitude diagram. Most of these globular clusters have more than one name. And so this one in the new general catalogue is number 6,779. And so some people will know it by that name, some people will know it as M56. So this is not a plot of the positions of the stars in space. This is a plot of the properties of the stars, if you like. You've got blue things on the left, red things on the right, and then how bright the star is, faint things at the bottom, bright things at the top. M56 turns out to be one of the less well-studied globular clusters um, and it's probably well, less well studied because it's fairly far away and it's also fairly close to the galactic plane which in other words there's lots of kind of stuff and dust and crud which kind of hinders our view of it. The ones we, see, we can see best are the ones which are closer and maybe point, pointing away from the galactic plane. The stars down here on this thing called the main sequence are the ones that are turning hydrogen into helium at the moment so they're actually in the centres of the stars what's powering them what's making them glow in the dark is the turning of hydrogen into helium. The ones over here on the horizontal branch are turning helium into carbon, so that's later on in the lifetime. Because we understand these properties, we can actually infer some things about the properties of the cluster. For example, the length of this main sequence before it starts kind of turning off to the right here tells us something about the age of the globular cluster. And the shorter, the stubbier this thing is, the older the cluster is, because the bigger stars all live up here and they die sooner. And so this sort of progressively moves down. So when you see a very stubby little main sequence like this, it tells you you're looking at a very old cluster. This is one of the oldest clusters known. It's about 13 billion years old. And given that the entire universe is less than 14 billion years old, this is something which formed very early on in the lifetime of the universe. Because it's so old, it's got a particular pattern of chemistry. So if I talk about abundances, the sun is mostly hydrogen, a bit of helium, and not much else. The other stuff makes up maybe one or 2% of the mass of the sun. But it's the other stuff that's probably more interesting for people on Earth because it's things like oxygen and silicon and iron and so on and so forth. When stars have lots of heavy elements in them, then they end up living at this end of this horizontal branch. When they have very few heavy elements in them, they end up living at this end of the horizontal branch. Astronomers refer to all heavy elements as metals, and so the technical term for this is, this is called a metal-poor globular cluster. So it's not metals like we're used to metals in terms of things that my desk might be made out of. It's basically anything which isn't hydrogen or helium. And so the sun has something like between one and a half and two percent of its mass is in the form of metals. Whereas the stars in M56 have something like a hundredth of the amount of metals than the sun has. These heavier elements like iron only get made in stars. And so the fact you see heavy elements at all tells you that the material this cluster was made of must have been through a previous generation of stars. But in this case, probably only one previous generation of stars. And so there's not been much time to make these heavy elements. So in the Big Bang, we had pretty much hydrogen and helium being formed and kind of not much else. And so the origin of all the other elements in the periodic table was either in stars or in supernova explosions. Stuff that gets spewed out into space that we see, for example, in the Crab Nebula, M1, gets replenished in new stars that form after. When the Sun formed four and a half billion years ago, you know, the solar nebula from which the Sun formed and the planets, 
it, 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 it was formed of mostly hydrogen and helium with a little bit of other stuff, but the other stuff, that's the stuff that the Earth was formed from. So it's kind of, all it makes of a tiny fraction of a total is kind of pretty key to get planets like the Earth formed. I mean, all the stuff that we're made of, which is sort of, you know, the carbon and iron and so on that, that make up our bodies, um, was sort of the stuff that was left over when the sun formed. So from the material the sun formed, there was clearly, there were those heavy elements in there. And everything in there was formed in previous generations of stars, that really the, the material that makes up you and me is really made of star stuff.